Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. And do stay tuned for um, the Polytunnel Cacti Succulent Collection coming up in a few days after this one. And if you didn't see part one and part two, do check them videos out. The links to both them videos will be up above and they'll also be down below in the video description. So do check them out. And here we are. First, I'm going to start off in the living room. And uh, this is our little living room here. And we have a lovely big large window, one of these lovely, lovely windows that it's mostly north facing. It does get a little bit of sun coming in in the, the spring and the summertime. But at this time of year in winter, it is practically, or, or practically north facing, but it's a very bright window. And we have here a collection of a few different house plants. This one here is our lovely Monstera plant, uh, commonly known as the monkey's face. It's one of the smaller leaf growing um monsteras that has the gorgeous lovely lovely small little leaves and beautiful beautiful um holes in it and nicknamed that's why it's nicknamed the monkey's face or the monkey's mask and this plant we've had probably about a couple of years now and it is growing really really well as you can see there we have it trailing all the way up in the window and we also love to put crystals all around our plants and in the home as well because they add they add a lovely bit of uh, not only do they look beautiful around the home, but the plants love the, the energies of the crystals. Crystals and plants are my passions. And here we have um, a beautiful African violet, violet, the St. Paulia. And this is a gorgeous pink flowering one. Lovely to see blooms at this time of year on these beauties. They do very, very well in this window here that gets a lot of light, but away from, from sun, obviously. Here we have another lovely big crystals there. And here we have a Devalia fern. And this, I'm not kidding you guys, this Devalia, just look at them hairy rhizomes. They're like tarantula's legs. <laughs> and this is an absolutely incredible fern that we've had for a few years now. We've got it as a very small plant and it has just grown. It's actually sitting on top of one of our big uh, philodendrons here that we have all growing along the window in a, in a big vine. And it has just literally overtook the whole pot, all the lovely big hairy rhizomes all hanging all around the pot there. It's very comfortable. And we probably, when we do have to come and repot both this Devalia and also the big philodendron, we'll have to keep them together because they've been possible to separate. But they look, it looks amazing. And I'll just go back just to show you these roots. And then here we have a huge, 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 we have two, two in fact, yep, two large philodendrons here. I'm just gonna stand up on the chair so to get the better light in here. These philodendrons, um, as you can see, they're, they're lovely, lovely leaves. They love, love the living room because they love the bright light, but away from sun. And it is growing all the way, all over. Sorry about the lighting, guys. Not the best here when I'm trying to film. All over the windowsill. We have it trailing across. We have another one here. Two very large philodendrons that are absolutely thriving. I say philodendrons and monsteras grow very well together because they're like, they're like more or less the same conditions. And what I love about this philodendron here is the lovely sort of red stems on it as well as they form the new, um, the new stems and leaves. Absolutely gorgeous. And then here in this lovely um, big bowl here, we have a um, Stephanotis a flower bundle. And this one here is also growing as a vine all along. I'll just show you the leaves there on this here. Beautiful plant. It is gorgeous. And this is one that Hans brought over when he lived in Sweden. And it is grown as a lovely vine all along the winter. It has lovely little white flowers on it. Not at the moment, it's not flowering at the moment, but it normally has lovely white flowers going all the way around. And it's such a pretty, pretty plant. If you want to see what this Stephanotis plant looks like when it's in flower, then do check out the video when it was blooming beautiful. I'll link up above to that video and uh, you'll be amazed at the lovely little flowers on this. And they smell gorgeous as well, like jasmines and beautiful vine. So there's a mixture, say the philodendrons here and the, the Stephanotis. And the Stephanotis looks very much Hoya-like. People often see when I do my houseplant updates, they think this is a Hoya, but this is a Stephanotis, but the leaves are very similar and it grows very much like a Hoya as well, how it trails all the way up into a lovely vine. And I'll just come back because get a bit of an idea then you see of the um, Stephanotis and the philodendrons, how they grow all along the windowsill there and um, also all along the top of the window. 
And then here we have some more St. Paul ears, commonly known as the African violets as well there. This one is a little small one, not flowering at the moment. The one at the back is in flower, lovely little purple flowers on that. And again, this is a lovely purple flowering one as well. They're lovely to see flowers at this time of year. These are great little house plants. And I say they love all the crystals on there. So this is the living room and I'm going to show you what we've got in the other rooms in the house. Now this is our staircase where we have three of our very large gigantic cactus plants and the first one here is um, a very very old large Brasilio cactus basiliensis and the reason why we have these on our staircase is because they're too tall to put in our polytunnel to overwinter. We have them outside in the yard in the spring and summer but bring them inside to overwinter and on the stairs we can have um, a bit of a tier system as you can see there where they don't touch the roof <laughs> and uh, they do very well overwintering here uh, so this is one of the the lovely this particular Brasilio Apuncha known as the um, the Apuncha Brasiliensis also part of the prickly pear family it's one of the ones that has these lovely sort of pads wavy pads that look almost like leaves very beautiful but it's a very spiny plant but it's a gorgeous beauty and it has recently been flowering as you can see there's two flowers there crazy in December but we do have two grow lights directly above them and uh, this helps them to overwinter get plenty of light because obviously they're not in a window and they get loads of light from the grow lights and these are the two flowers recently flowered. I did pollinate the flowers and I think, I don't want to be camera up just yet, but I think it's possibly been a success because the flowers have closed and it already starts to look like it's starting to swell a bit at the base where the flowers are. So fingers crossed I'll have seed. And that's uh, this plant itself is very, very tall. It's, I don't know, possibly eight, nine feet tall. Very, very tall plant. This one here is a very, very... Uh, big tall Pilosocereus cactus and this one again is probably about seven feet high there's two in the same pot there very old old cactus too again Pilosocereus is not a cold hardy one it needs a minimum of about 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit so that's why we have to overwinter indoors and as i say the only place it fits is on our staircase but they do get go outside in the spring and summer and then this particular very very big possibly also seven feet high or more trichocereus cactus is uh, one that Hans my wonderful fiance has grown himself from seed about 48 years ago and it is huge guys again too tall for our polytunnel trichocereus cacti very cold hardy and we have all our other trichocereus in the polytunnel for the the winter months but this is too tall to fit in there so again it has to go on our staircase under a grow like this is the Sansi 36 watt grow bulb and it's absolutely brilliant it overwinters really well that's the Gemma also grow light as well very good as you can see we've had uh, a puncher they're flowering so it's been very good at this time of year and uh, that's the ones on our staircase crazy I know we have plants everywhere but you just have to do what you have to do to get through the winter months until they can go back out in the garden again now guys, here I am in our little bathroom here and I've actually got Hans holding the camera because he's got long arms and he can reach all the tillantias that are up on the moss pole. So if you're not familiar with Hans, my wonderful fiance's YouTube channel, do go over and subscribe to him. Family of Cactus and Other Beauties, links up above. And here we've got a collection in, uh, in our little bathroom of bromeliards and air plants. And first of all, I'm going to show you here on the, the, um, on the pole here that we've got here is a collection of different types of tillantias and I have made a video of a whole entire tillantia air plant collection because we've got more downstairs as well and if you haven't seen that video do watch that video I, I show you all the whole collection and also the names of each individual one so I won't talk about the names of them in here links to that video will be up above so do check that collection out but here they are growing all all on the um, all the poles that we've got here, a selection of different Tillandsia air plants. They're doing really, really well. And then we have this big moss pole here that we've got a collection of lots and lots of different types of Tillandsia air plants as well, all growing amazing. A lot of them have been flowering and uh, forming seeds. They seem to thrive in our bathroom window. It's a, it's a south facing window, but it's got frosted glass. So it gets more indirect light. It filters out some of the strong sunlight. So it's perfect for them. 
and Hans doing a great job there of uh, with his long arms being able to reach the top of the the moss pole and uh, then we have also on the other side of our um, window we have our Spanish moss there doing really really well it seems to do well in that position we also have then um, yet yeah, I've shown you there and then we also have our little tilancia there so um, the little another Spanish moss that we've got another piece there that's recently been flowering there we have our big um, tilancia xerographica and that's an absolute beauty of an air plant. And I have made a video on how to care for Tillandsia xerographica. So if you haven't seen that video, do check that out also. Links also up above. It's one of the large growing Tillandsias, an absolutely beautiful specimen plant. Very beautiful. And uh, then we've also got yet more on the other side, as you can see there, which is a lovely big orange flower bract. And that's on our Tillandsia diariana, and it's been flowering for absolutely weeks. The little flowers that grow all along the colourful flower bracts is dying off now, as you can see, but still lovely colour. Beautiful. And then we have um, our bromel, more commonly known as the bromeliards here, and uh, they're doing really well as so well. New little baby growing on that one there. That's the Tillandsia diariana. And uh, with water in them, I just put water through the rainwater through the funnels of them, and they do well. This one is a Tillandsia cyanea as well, and we've also got um, some more Spanish moss on there that came off the mother plant, and that's doing well. So very beautiful. And then, uh, last but not least, we've got two little pineapple plants there, and they are also part of the bromeliard family, as you may or may not know, and they they do well there. And then. Sure, yep, yep, there's little ones in the corners. We've got tilantias everywhere, guys. Very beautiful. Loads of lacy little leaves on it. And then to finish off in the bathroom, this is our Aspidistra plant. And that we have um, doing well here in the bathroom. I said it gets a lot of indirect light, which these prefer more shade. And that seems to be doing very well there as well. Now, this is our bedroom where we have. Um, mostly a lot of our ferns here and uh, also we have our lovely poinsettia that is blooming beautiful as well so uh, here we go first of all we have a, one of our nephilepis ferns here and this little window here it's only a small window but it's very bright and it's north practically a north facing window but we have an extra grow light up there one of the um, led grow lights there to give a bit of an extra boost over the winter months and this has been working its miracle here for this poinsettia because they do like to have a bit of indirect sun normally especially when it comes to flowering and uh, we make sure we only have this light on the same hours during the day because poinsettia is very sensitive if you have lights on in the house and you have these plants in the house and they're unlikely to flower if you have them on um, during the evening so we just have this set to come on during the daytime um, and it's blooming beautiful. If you want to know how to rebloom a poinsettia, I've made a video specially on that. So do check that video out if you have one of these beautiful plants and you want to know how to get it to bloom every year for you. Check out the video. Links will be up above. And there you go. So it's a nephilepis. Some more of our poinsettia. These are cuttings from the, the big mother plant here that's blooming beautiful at the moment. Another fern as well, this is one of these sort of lovely curly leaved ferns, almost reminds me a bit like kale, curly kale, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then here we have more different selection of different types of ferns again here, and uh, different varieties. As I say we have another grow light on here, this one is one of the, the white grow, in, grow lights here that we have, that you can sort of bend around, it's one of them clip-on ones. It does really well to give the ferns a bit of additional light because these ones are away from the window. Another big nephrolepis there as well. And another one of nephrolepis, more of the, I think this is the nephrolepis, the button variety has more of the small little button little leaves on it. Again, that gets good light there from the grow light. They seem to be pretty much doing well anyway. And that's it. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed the house plant tours. And uh, if you want to know a little bit more on how to care for cacti and succulents as well as some house plants, then do please subscribe to my channel. And also check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.